Oh, don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. Anyone else but me. No, no, no. Don't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. Till I come marching home. Well, there we go. It's a good old song from World War II. And, uh... About the apple tree. I think there's been a few changes to the lyrics over the years to make it more uh, non-war friendly, but uh, that's the original. Anyway, today we're going to make baked apple cranberries in our slow cooker. And so the first thing you are going to want is four large apples, cored and sliced. The kind of apples is totally up to you. But four large apples, cored and sliced. Just dump them right in your slow cooker. The next thing you're going to want is a tablespoon of lemon juice, which you're going to sprinkle over your apples. And you just want to kind of move that around in there. This is basically to keep your apples from going brown while you're doing the other things you need to do. Alrighty. On top of the apples, we're going to add a third of a cup of dried cranberries. You can add more if you prefer. You can go half cup or a cup. But, uh, the cranberries are just more there to add a little color and extra flavor, not to be the main ingredient. So just kind of mix them through your, your mix. All right, we can set that aside for a minute. Now you're going to want a bowl, and into the bowl you're going to put... Now, I'm using brown sugar Splenda, so I'm using one tablespoon of brown sugar Splenda. But if you're using regular brown sugar, you want to use three tablespoons of regular brown sugar. Brown sugar Splenda is much, much sweeter than regular brown sugar. And if I use three tablespoons of it, this would be so sweet, you would just, I don't think you'd be able to eat it. And you're going to want to add to that a teaspoon of cinnamon, ground cinnamon. Now you just want to blend those together really well. Try and get rid of most of the lumps in your brown sugar, or your brown sugar sponda. And to that you're going to add a half of a cup of apple juice. Now whether you use sweetened or unsweetened, that's totally up to you. Again, that will affect the sweetness level of your mix. And you want to Use your whisk and whisk that together nicely. And once you've got it all nicely whisked together, you're going to pour it over your apples. And cranberries, of course. Oops, you may need a spatula to get out the last little ribs. Because you want all that goodness to be in your slow cooker, not in your uh, bowl. So if we get that in there. And your final ingredient is a third of a cup of chopped pecans, 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 cans of peas, no, not cans of peas, but chopped pecans, or you can use chopped walnuts if you prefer walnuts. And you just dump them in. Now you're going to take your spoon and you're going to just give that another good stir. Try and get everything mixed together nicely and coated. You want all that cinnamon and brown sugar to get through there and coat your apples. So just give them a real good stir around. I always like to wipe the edge around because otherwise I find that you end up getting a little popping noise as your food is cooking because your lid doesn't seal down like it should. So just give that a wipe. And that's it, my friends. Pretty simple recipe. Put on the lid. Oops, escape walnut. Put on the lid. Place it in our slow cooker. And set it on low. On low for three hours. So I'm going to set my timer for three hours. I'll put it here. So I'll go three. Oh, oh, oh. And three hours. There we go. So in two hours, 59 minutes, and 55 seconds, we will have a nice baked dessert. 
So we'll be back then to take a look at it and see if it's worth eating. And I can guarantee you it will be. Alrighty, go read a book. We'll be back. Well, hello again. Just said goodbye and I'm, now I'm saying hello. You ever have one of those oops moments? I just had one. Just took that over, took this over, put it in the crock pot, set it to cook, and went, oops, I forgot something. And what I forgot, was two tablespoons of melted butter. <laughs> so we're gonna pour that over the top now. Minor ingredient there, yeah. So now that we've got that added, I'm just going to stir that around a little bit, get that mixed in, and we can put it back to cook. Not a very good thing to do as a chef, or leave out one of your ingredients. So uh, good thing I caught it before we got too far along here. So all right, now we've got that added as it should have been in the first place. Let's get this back on to cooking. And we'll be back when it's done to see how it turns out. All right, our three hours is up, so let's have a look and see how our dessert looks. Just gonna give this a good stir again, get the juices all nice and mixed in there. Oh yeah, this looks good. Tell you what, let's just shim up in a bowl and have a look at it. I'm going to bring the camera over, take a close-up. All right, hang on. There we go. Doesn't that look good? There's how it looks in the pot. Now all I need is a nice dollop of ice cream on there to just make the best dessert taste even better. And guess what? I'm out of ice cream, so I'm going to have to make a trip to the store. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's recipe and you'll give it a try. So simple. Just uh, don't do the oops that I did and remember to put your butter in before you put it over in the container, although I managed to catch it in time, so all is well that ends well. I can't wait to eat this, and I hope you'll give it a try and enjoy it too. All right, until Friday when we have our shout-out story and groaner of the week, take care, stay safe, and God bless.